Hey guys, here with Palna Food, and we are trying out Sandberg, which is pretty cool. Up against Andy, I'm not really sure what this Andy deck is playing. So I'm actually going to be extra cautious and put two ETRs in HQ first turn. This might be excessive, but I've also had people do like SMC siphon, and you lose that way. So let's not get siphoned. Play it safe, we should be able to find enough ice. Well, no real indication yet. Here's our Sandberg. So this is a new card. There's no text on it yet, but if you don't know what it is, what it allows you to do is get, um, if you have at least 10 credits, then all your ice get uh, plus one strength for every five credits you have. So if you have 20 credits, you got plus four global boost to all your, all your ice. Should be interesting in this matchup because I think all his breakers are pumpable, which would make things like a, you know a ten strength roto turret pretty annoying. Palm is definitely the idea that can make a lot of credits, and we'll see what he has against us. Security testing. Okay, it is stealth, so that's gonna be pretty good. I mean, he can switch blade to get plus seven strength against this roto turret, so this will not keep him out. Um, he might run into stealth against a big code gate because the refractor is plus three. Yeah, we'll see. Anyway, we'll start looking for more moolah. It's gonna have to be Cobra and Archives. It's it's all right. Not the best ice. We gotta worry about security testing in this matchup. Taxation that's thrown in the table. So with stealth, you never really know if they're just hiding breakers in their hand or if they don't have them yet. So we could think about pushing the sales team out. It's pretty great if you can rush one. Ten credits would definitely help us, but not convinced. Um, I'm gonna go for the gimp. Let's see if the two net damage hurts him at all. Hit the refractor. That could be critical for us. Criminals typically have little to no recursion. And I don't know if you can special order another one or not. So we want to second ice anything in front of this when we can jam this. Gotta worry about inside job. Chimera is not amazing, but it will do because all we need is something to stop inside jobs. Probably zoom a little more in since I don't think we're gonna have too many remotes this game. So the trouble with the Sandberg is where do you put it, right? That's the main issue with this card. I don't want to make a new remote because he can just security test off it all day. And it's pretty miserable for that to happen. I think I want to play Restructure this turn. I want him to drive by this is the problem. What do you have drive by though? I think if he does, we'll just play in turns. I think it'll be fine. I don't want to pre-res it into a... Well, actually, if it's res, what would hurt it? Not much, I guess. It's just we're paying two credits early on. So he can now convert one stealth into his security testing dollars. It's what he needs because right now he's pretty poor. We need to find more ice. Okay. Hmm. Five creds. So if he just siphons us next turn, we're going to be unhappy. But we also can't do anything about that except 
play our Sandberg out into security testing, which is also sad. So I'm just going to jam the Nisei anyway. We'll see what happens. Um, with I think our mine is going to go down pretty pretty early, so we'll just pitch this Sandberg. We might get one later. It's more for matches where you can actually have open remotes like Shapers. But the security testing is just a huge liability for us. If we don't get Siphon to death this turn, then we'll probably be okay. I could have played the Caprice to HQ. That might have been the safe way to go. Like, we're kind of hoping that the Enigma is enough to keep him out of my remote, right? Like, trashing his first refractor, they often don't have two of them. All right, this is solid. We're gonna get to knock him off a click. He will get the bounce, so he can bounce R&D after this. But I think as long as our Nisei token is up, we can stop one Siphon. Yeah, that's too bad. Let the siphon spam commence. What do we do next turn? Probably money back up. Probably have to trash security testing. Probably have to trash the same old thing. We've got access. He just wanted to play siphon to, to bluff his way in, I guess. If he'd had an agenda, he would have bounced our agenda, so that would have been great for him. But he maybe has second thoughts about losing a security testing. I think if he loses security testing, he's kind of dead in the water. So we have three advance, can you say token, we have to use it right away to block. The siphon. Or we take money and we discard. So the problem is if we don't score the Nisei and block siphon, we just get siphoned again anyway. I'm getting his rebirth this early. Really good for him. He's gonna get multiple triggers. Yeah, so the Roto is not even good until we have Sandberg, and even then it's only gonna cost him a little bit. So we could pitch both Rotos. We could pitch the sales team, but I think we want to score it in pretty short order. I think actually we'll draw enough ice that's better than this one. I think this is not going to be a good in indicator of how effective Sandberg is, other than to know that it's clearly bad against criminals. Security testing. He did run and flip them. Okay. So like the thing with that is I'm happy to keep Jenna in my hand. Do we cover up or do we just play? R&D, play to HQ, cost him two more dollars to siphon us. Let's 
really not that exciting, is it? But I don't know if you would... This might be a, a bluff play, but I don't know if you'd buy it or not. So his cost of siphon is now $5. She should be able to make. I'd love to not use this token just stopping a siphon. Might not get a choice though. Something you can do is put the sandberry in your scoring remote and just like dirtle forever. While your ice are large to help defend and build your bank up. Well, this cobra is like okay. I think we gotta just double advance here. With the idea of scoring it next turn, having a click to put back our ice. We're at risk of getting nailed on R&D by a lucky bounce, but that's kind of the Leela variance. Leela's a very high variance character. It's these critical turns against Glacier where you either blow them out by bouncing their whole turn, what they did spend their whole turn doing, or you just do nothing. So fingers crossed that the R&D holds up. We don't have that many agendas. Yeah, okay. I think we still gotta res this. It's still taxing him, his silencer. He's gonna pay two stealth. So even now getting the rotor turret on top of this would tax the stealth further. He doesn't have cloak out, which I'd like to see. We're gonna burn the token. He'll just go again. So I think either way, you just let him bounce if he hits. Okay, we lose a Caprice. I'd say okay. He should run again probably and try to Spend his Ghost Runner, try to get the bounce. The bounce is so critical. Okay, it wasn't in it anyway. So now we're happy campers. We got 10 bucks in the bank we can use. And we can just reinstall whatever he bounces. He's gonna bounce the wall, which is okay. I'll get us playing Jackson now. It's kind of whatever. So we could put the Chimera out. It's not really good by itself. It's the main issue. It can be a remote code gate if you were to start a second remote, but we still have to put another ice in front so we can't just security test off of it all day. I think we credit here. Yeah, that's what you'd expect. Um, let's burn the, the token here. He won't get his Desperado. He'll have to use the same old thing, and then if he same old things, he'll have attack at the end of his turn. Okay, so he uses Siphon, and basically it's a way to clear the way for legwork. The fact that Siphon costs zero is, to my mind, a huge mistake of the game. Like, really, you should want to land your Siphons, not just play them because they're a gigantic threat, whether or not you even want to use it. But it is how it is, so we'll deal with it. So like, even though we stopped a Siphon, we don't feel like, yes, I stopped a Siphon. You feel like, congratulations, I used my very valuable resource stopping a zero cost event. And now we can do a different thing. So what I think we're going to do is get a Caprice up on our HQ to stop the next Siphon. And we'll trust this Enigma to hold the fort down forever in R&D. So what we want to get after this is a second Sentry in R&D. Or we could start up the Sandberg remote, which, I don't know, it's going to tax him once we're past like 20 something dollars. It's kind of a long-term solution. 
that relies on us getting a lot of money. I thought about resin this early, but I really want to play restructure, and I'll be at nine dollars. If he bounces it, I don't think he can siphon that bad follow up. Having to play the same old siphon is a lot worse for him because he wants to clear his tags. If he loses his testing, he kind of is done. Okay. So we could do Sandberg Quandary if we want the Sandberg to live. But I don't think we want to do that. I think we want to get a second. So here's the problem with the Rota Turret. Zero strength is no good. It's really better once you have the Sandberg. This just forced him to use one more stealth. I think we're going to try the Sandberg thing. But what if we put it in the scoring remote and play a restructure? And just, just hang out for a while until we can manage to draw our food, get our money in a good place. He doesn't have any points, so I'm kind of okay with doing a bit of bleeding in R&D while we get our stuff together. Just need one more good ice on that on the R&D to make it expensive for him. The vanilla is pretty good here. Static's pretty good and probably worth a three dollars extra. I could throw the Jackson out and get back th two money and the interns, but if I keep the Jackson with the quandary. And I'll be able to draw for a little while, which I think I want to draw for a little while. So let's go R&D and say definitely stop for now and I'll get my quandary in the new remote. If he has RDIs, the chances of him having two refractors a bit lower. Yeah, like one out of eight would have been very unlucky, but we hit him twice, so I think that was just a very... <laughs> Still salty. Ah, uh, that's too bad. <laughs> oh, I guess he's, he's just playing with me. All right. Yeah, this is Criminal Problems Exhibit A. You know, your breaker gets trashed and you're really upset. It's not like you're playing Spy Cam and you have three levy and three clone chips and just don't even care. So we didn't get to see Sandberg, but actually I think it's what caused him to concede in the end. Once we'd flipped this up, we would have had uh, soon to be plus four strengths. We would have had seven power while a static. That's a lot for Corroder. We would have had four power vanilla, which is still three bucks for Corroder. He wasn't able to run R&D um, basically ever again. And if we just take money every turn, we'll get them even bigger and bigger to the point where he can't make runs economically. And then his remote's totally locked out because he clearly didn't have a second refractor at all or like a rex or anything sometimes you'll see, you'll see a rex as a backup or even like well not crypsis anymore in the old days you'd play crypsis but nowadays it's probably the rex you'd use as a backup decoder Alrighty, well i'll test this some more i like the card it's got a unique and interesting effect that no other card really does so i'm going to be Curious to see what you can do with it beyond just like playing an asset spam deck that puts a ton of stuff on the board. Because that doesn't overly interest me. Thanks for watching.